all those things and so much more Just grab a seat in the chair with the floor Sit back, relax, recline While she drops another casual line You're tuned in to Casually Molly With Molly and Boogie Welcome back to the Casually Molly podcast. I am your host, Molly Ambergy. Uh, for those of us who are just joining the podcast, welcome. We're so happy to have you. Uh, for returning listeners, thank you so much. Uh, again, based in St. Louis, Missouri, I'm a comedian and playwright here, but that's enough about me. We're going to actually introduce our casual guest. She's a great comedian all the way from New York City. Give it up for Sue Ra, everybody. Yes, there we go. We got hey, the handle too. Hey, everyone. What's up? Oh, sorry. No hands. <laughs> <laughs> Did not get oh, yeah. oh, that's all right, girl. You can talk. You're the guest, so you can throw up your hands. So it's all good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, just Thank for me. You. I have a. Thanks for having me, Molly. Oh, of course. Absolutely. Uh, I just want to give everybody a quick background. How I met uh, Sue Ra. Shout out to Reggie Cush Edwards. Uh, he introduced us at the Funny Bone St. Louis. Uh, you were in town in St. Louis here. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that and what brought you here to, on your journey? <laughs> Oh, yeah. So uh, I was in St. Louis that night because my other job is I am a flight attendant. So always on tour, baby. <laughs> and, uh, I love that overnight because we stay right next to the funny bone. Like I can walk down from my room to the funny bone in three minutes. It's amazing. So that night, it just happened to be an open mic night. And I got lucky. I got lucky. Like, all right, I'm in town. Let's hit a mic. Let's do it. And there we go. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And you killed it. I remember the audience had such a great uh, reaction to you, uh, which I just want to talk about. You know, you're obviously you're flying in, you're a flight attendant. That's awesome. Uh, but let's talk about your comedy. I know I read in your bio, you started in Miami. Uh, what started you with doing comedy in Miami when you, I've never been there, but uh, does it have a big scene for comedy there? <laughs> uh, not really. It's more of like a nightclub scene, you know, <laughs> like that's more their jam right there. Um, but it, when I was starting comedy in Miami, which was about eight, nine years ago, um, it was up and coming. You know, there was like about a room you could get on maybe once a night if you're willing to drive all the way to Broward, which is like a good hour drive. Uh, so there was that. And um, I just was working at this steakhouse. My friend, um, it was like this fancy steakhouse, Prime 112. Shout out to Prime 112. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like a bunch of, it's like, it's very classy steakhouse during the day. And then as soon as like around 10 p.m., it turns into like the nightclub. It gets, they turn off the Frank Sinatra and onto the two chains. And it's like, Everybody comes in before the club. They're like in their tight dress, <laughs> and in their high heels. Like it is a scene to be seen. Um, and so I was there. Um, I was a hostess, you know, uh, and I would just like walk these people to the table. Anyway, so it was always just like ridiculous clientele, like the rich, the wannabe rich, the you know people complaining about their tables not being ready because they would always be overbooked and oversold. And um, I would just be kind of like low key teasing everybody under the, you know, behind the host saying like, look at this guy, you know, he thinks he's so <laughs> hot shit with his little paisley shirt, you know? And um, my manager was like, girl, we gotta get you on stage. So another waiter that was working there, he, uh, yeah, he was like, all right, let's go to this open mic night. And it was, the craziest rush of my night like of my life actually it was like <laughs> i've never done heroin but if i ever like could imagine what heroin would be like it would be like that night you know <laughs> yes <It was> <laughs> that's I, wow i didn't know that story so that's awesome thank you so much for sharing that uh, i i think anybody especially we have a lot of comedians who listen to this podcast can relate to that first open mic it's an adrenaline rush uh being in comedy you just start one mic and then you keep doing them and keep doing shows uh but yeah what made you decide on the uh the move to new york city 
Shoot, um, I guess just chasing that high. <laughs> chasing that high. Um, yeah, I, uh, so like before, uh, around that time period when I decided to move to New York, I was in between jobs. I was kind of like already like living out of a storage unit. Um, so I had like all my shit in storage. I was already there. I was living on friends' couches because I was doing this other marketing job where we tour around the country. So I didn't need an apartment. So I had all my stuff all ready to go already. And I was like, you know what? I've always wanted to live in New York, blah, blah, blah. I went there when I was 12. It was great. So I can handle it now, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and so like, uh, yeah. So my, my good friend from college, she had an apartment. She had a extra room. And my airline at the time had a base in, or not at the time, they still do, uh, in New York. So I was like, all right, now's the time. Uh, nothing like moving to New York in the middle of December <laughs> to say, welcome. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was wild. Like, I don't even think I owned um, a pair of uh, socks, like at that point, you know, like it was straight flip flops for me before that. <laughs> so it well, that makes sense because you were coming from Miami. So I would understand you're like, oh, cool. Like I've got my flip flops. All of a sudden now I need socks and boots. What's happening here? Yeah. So. Yep. And that's why I bought my first pair of Tims. I bought my first pair of Tims. You know, I'm like, all right, if I want to look like I can fit in New York, I better get these things. <laughs> and still day. So, yeah. So that's how I made the trek up to New York. And um, yeah, now I'm uh, chilling in a hotel room in Northwest Arkansas. So it's just crazy <laughs> what the world takes you. <laughs> Now you said, now, are you moving again? Are you moving somewhere else? Or are you moving to Arkansas? What's going on? Oh, hell no. Oh my gosh. Like, <laughs> oh gosh, just commit suicide before you move here. <laughs> no, um, I'm sure it's great. I'm sure it's great. Um, I, uh, I, what did I do? I moved from Brooklyn to Queens. So it seems like a big move because I moved from borough to borough. So yeah. So I moved from Brooklyn to Queens last two nights ago yeah it was quite it was quite the the day and then I went did a show and came right home and finished moving around like 10 p.m yeah it was yeah people are like what you moved today I'm like yeah I it's crazy you never know how much shit you have until you're moving like have you you've moved mm -hmm. before right Molly Oh yeah. Oh my. Mm -hmm. I'm in my in my new house right now, so I understand. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. It's like, all right, this this one room should only take me a couple hours to pack. 2 days later, you're like, how much shit did I how did I accumulate so much crap, you know? Like, where does this all come from? So Oh, I feel yeah. And I can't believe you did a show on the same day, too. Like you did you have to go to another borough as well for that? Yeah, I had to go to Manhattan that day. So yeah, and then I was actually supposed to also do a show in Harlem that night. And luckily, um, I wouldn't normally say this, but luckily it got canceled. And then the night before I was supposed to do a show as well. And by the grace of God, that one got canceled too. I was like, I would never want my shows to be canceled, but it, it was weird events why they were canceled. Like it was like something like the electricity in one building and the other one was like a flood. It was like, what? Like, is somebody making this crap up? Like, it sounds like I'm making these excuses up so I don't have to go. Like, yeah. And I was like, thank God, because it gave me a little extra time, you know, to get everything done. But we're there. We're moved. We're, well, we're not yes. settled, but you know, we'll get there. So, yeah. I love Whew. it. And uh, I'm a big fan of Queens. My mom's originally from uh, Forest Hills. So, yeah. Oh, so, yeah. No, okay. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I so know. I was a person. Yes. I, uh, I, I always loved New York. I went there a lot growing up just because my mom was from there. So anybody that's like, oh, I live in New York, like you really have to be a strong, awesome person to be in New York. Perhaps <laughs> to you for doing that. Uh, doing oh, that. Okay. I, oh, yeah. And I love the comedy scene there. It's really, really awesome. Shout out to everybody there. Uh, what I will ask you, though, is you were kind of talking about this prior. Uh, going to the other side of the coast. One of your credits here, you were on Kill Tony, which I saw on YouTube. You were great. I loved it. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about what we were saying when, uh, or you were saying when we were trying to get tech and everything set up about your experience getting on stage for Kill Tony? Oh yeah, that was that was a crazy night. I remember they run an open mic downstairs, so mm -hmm. I had signed up for both. 
the mic and for Kill Tony. And I got both, which was crazy because I heard the mic was kind of rigged. <laughs> but um, um, so I got on the mic and I completely bombed. Like I didn't. I didn't know at the time that it was like all comedians down there. So you know how those mics can be. Um, so completely bombed. And I'm like, oh my God, like I feel like shit, but whatever. I got to just run upstairs, see what's going on with this podcast, like um, this show. And as soon as I walk upstairs, they call my name to the stage. I'm like, uh, what? Uh. <laughs> you know, so I'm just like freaking out because I think it's my first time like officially performing upstairs at the comedy store. And, um, yeah, I was just, I didn't know at the time, like, you know, how much of a following they had. So I just was pretty chill about it, but also like, um, you know, I didn't, I was like kind of newer at comedy. So I didn't bother to ever correct Tony for mispronouncing my name the entire episode. And, uh, and then also like, I picked up the wrong mic. Like I was just a little bit like, oh. <laughs> but, <laughs> But, but since then, the critique he gave me about changing the one joke, I've, I've changed it and it's worked better ever since. So got to give it up to, you know, Greg Fitzsimmons for giving me that, uh, you know, giving me that idea. Yeah, no, I actually, I could, you look seamless to me. And I think it's just because you have that awesome chill personality where you're like, oh, I picked up the wrong mic and I did this. I didn't even notice. I was like, wow, she's so comfortable <laughs> for somebody who yeah. just got pulled up on stage. That's awesome. Do you get that a lot where people are like, oh, you're so chill? <laughs> Uh, yeah, except for the people who really know me, then they're like, you are a high strong bitch. Like, <laughs> what is going on with you? Like, you are so like, like in the nice way, like, um, other people who really know me would maybe call me like anal. And then other people who are being a little bit nicer would call me, um, attention to detail. <laughs> they feel like, you know, you're very, um, you know, attention to detail, detail oriented. That's what they say. Detail oriented. <laughs> I love it. I use detail oriented on resumes a lot. So I know, I know what yeah. that is. So, so that way I can be, yeah, I, I'm a little anal on things too. I'm pretty chill about stuff as well. But then I also, especially when it comes to your, as I'm sure, you know, when you're writing jokes and doing it, you know, attention to details. So oh, see, I'm moving my hands again. Got to put them back down here. <laughs> so, uh, but speaking of, you know, attention to detail, you wrote a great bio for me. I'm so excited to share it for when we promote this episode. Uh, one of your credits, you said you had something with BuzzFeed. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? <laughs> Oh yeah, sure. So that was cool. That was a really cool opportunity. My friend who I met in Miami, um, she like tagged me in this post that said, looking for flight attendants in New York City. And I was like, oh, okay, I fit both of those bills. Sweet. So I just, you know, wrote back and um, they used me for a couple of uh, videos, like a kind of like Q&A, like, okay, tell us about like an experience when you had you know, a crazy passenger or whatever. And so there are these fun little videos and then they use me for um, a couple of more like flight attendants review airplane scenes and like those kind of fun little videos that BuzzFeed does. And then uh, it was funny, the, one of the producers from one of those sh uh, sketches I did, he was like, hey, by the way, have you ever worked in fast food? I'm like, yeah, actually I have. Like it was my first job, I was 16, but sure, like we'll count it. Yeah, I did. He's like, okay, cool. Well, we're actually doing a video of former fast food workers, you know, talk about working there. I was like, all right, fuck it. Like, I'll do it. Like, I know it's been like, you know, 20 years, but, uh, not 20 years. Okay. I'm aging myself, but, um, it's been a while. So I was like, all right, whatever exposure is exposure. Let's do it. So I did it. And it was so funny. Um, since it had been so long and then like, you know, BuzzFeed followers are crazy. They noticed that I was flight attendant and fast food video. And they were like, BuzzFeed's recycling actors. They're all fake. Like it started this whole Reddit. Uh, I was trending on Reddit as um, a side-by-side -side photo of me in the flight attendant video and me in the fast food video about how BuzzFeed used fake actors. And everybody was like, guys, like it says former fast food workers or guys, you are, what are you 12? Like people have more than one job in their life. You know, like it was just, it was just ridiculous. Like I didn't even know my friend tagged me. She's like, you know, you're trending on Reddit right now. <laughs> like, That's right, fucking uh, awesome though. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. 
It was just so ridiculous. Like, it's true, though. People, like, d don't know. Like, they must be 12, but not thinking, like, oh, yeah, people have more than one job, especially in our, you know, in our generation. We have, like, 12 jobs by the time we're 30. <laughs> of course. I was about to say, if I, like, listed off all my retail jobs, my nannying jobs, my, like, I, I, you know, especially when you're in the entertainment industry, you're like, yeah. oh, I want to find out all these million things. It's like, I didn't just wake up and I was an airline, you know, a flight attendant <laughs> today, guys. Like, I don't understand. So I think it's kind of cool that your day job kind of fitted into your comedy career. So that's really awesome. Good for you. Not many yeah, people thanks. can say that that happens. <laughs> I know. I try. I, uh, I I try. I always say, like, work is sponsoring my comedy tour. They just don't know about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love it. So, like, yeah, so sometimes I could do comedy on my overnights. Um, not tonight. I, yeah, I don't think anything's going on in Northwest Arkansas tonight <laughs> on a Monday night. But um, but apparently there are some good shows here, but they happen on Thursday. So I gotta plan my trip out here next time. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> well, the next time you plan that Arkansas trip, let me know. I'll come out and support. I promise. Uh, <laughs> speaking of, <laughs> I'll come out. I'm like it's not too far from Missouri, so. Uh, but yeah, speaking of you, you know, doing shows, being on tour, I was pulling it up on Instagram and I was like, oh, I can't really like show you, obviously, because we're <laughs> on a virtual call. But I was dying of laughter, which is why I was like, oh, my God, I got to message Sue Rock because this is so good. Uh, what I love about your material, it's genuine and to you. And I love how that comes out in your personality, because when you had this video you posted on Instagram, I'm trying to like say this without laughing too much. But it, uh, there was a lady that was heckling you and you shut her down so quickly. <laughs> I don't know if you want to go into that, but you handled it like so well. What would be some of your advice about how you handle hecklers that maybe comedians can learn from where you just like shut that woman up so quickly? It was amazing. If you follow, <laughs> there's a uh, Raw's Instagram handle if you're watching on YouTube. Uh, it's fantastic. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about that? <laughs> Oh, thanks. Thanks so much. Yeah, um, that, <laughs> night, <laughs> that night was cool. It was uh, my first time, quote, headlining in my, um, you know, comedy hometown of Miami, which was cool. So I had like, you know, all my friends come out and um, the, the way they that venue does it, though, is they have like, you know, like, I think three or four comedians go up before the headliner who does like 30 minutes. So um Anyway, I didn't know, but that lady had been heckling every single comedian all night. Like she had just, she would say something and everybody would, all the comedians I was told before would just kind of like interact and start talking with her and then kind of derail their own set, you know, like they would just try to bring her in and whatever. And um, I was like thinking in my head, like, lady, I'm trying to get a good tape here. Like you're really fucking this shit up. <laughs> So, so I was just like, what is she saying right now? Like, I think she said something like, um, you know, I, I had the joke for the people who hadn't seen the clip um, about, you know, my adoption costing $20,000 and she shouts out, that's a down payment on a house. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> right. You heckle. I'm like, huh? Okay. So I'm just like, shut up, bitch, you know, and I just, I don't know, I said, you know, this, that, and this, and never, but I'm um, just kind of teasing her, but uh, yeah, I don't know, like, it was just, it was just off the cuff, but I think um, as far as giving advice to comedians, man, I mean, like, just remember, like, you're in control, you got the mic, you know, everybody else, nobody else, they don't hand out mics to the audience, so whatever you say is going to be louder than the rest of anyone else's opinion, um, but just make sure, like, Yours is kind of funny. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah. It was just handled so well, how you just shut her down so quickly and you weaved it into your joke so well. So if, again, if anybody, if even if you want to hit pause, if you're watching this on YouTube or on audio and you just go to Sue Ross Instagram, you scroll through some posts, you watch it. It is so well done. I just was like, I think I liked it. I was like, hell yes. Like you tell me. <laughs> like, it was just, I just thought it was so weird. She's like, oh, you're like a down payment on a house. And it's like, Oh, okay. Thank you. Like it was just the craziest thing, but you handled it. You handled it beautifully. It was amazing. I loved it. Oh, thanks so much. Yeah. Sometimes I think of like come back like a day later. I'm like, ah, 
I should have said that, you know? <laughs> well, I think I do that just in everyday life, let alone on stage. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm trying to see here too. I'm looking at, oh, that's what I wanted to ask you. Um, what was world star hip hop? I want to know about this. What was it? I'm like, I'm so intrigued. And I, I take some hip hop classes. I'm not very good yet, but I am trying. So why don't you tell us oh a, little, a little bit about Wait, this? Like, <laughs> you take hip hop, like the dance or like the rap? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, not the rap. Oh God, girl, no. I was like, I will not oh, be on Wild and Out anytime soon. But I am trying to learn how. I was in dance, but I did like ballet, tap, jazz, and so that's why I'm like, oh, I'm trying to learn that. But I was like, is she dancing? Is she rapping? What's going on? Let's talk about this. Is she oh doing gosh. both? I'm down. <laughs> no. Yeah. Oh gosh, neither actually. So World Star Hip Hop, <laughs> you guys don't know. It's like this. It's kind of, for lack of better words, it's a ratchet website. They post like new emerging artists. They have, you know, current hip hop artists, like ratchet videos of girls bum fights. Like it's just twerking. There's like a lot of, you know, hood clips going on there. And it's a very popular site in like, you know, the, the hood community. <laughs> and, uh, but they, um, but you know, they, they uh, had this like new show they were trying to do and um, it was called Who's the Mac? So basically they do have a very successful show called, um, I think, what is it called? Like Q, Q, I don't know. He just man on the street kind of thing. So anyway, we kind of um, incorporated that into the show where we would um, get these random guys uh, that we, you know, who's the Mac it was the goal of the show. So we were trying to see like these guys, if they could pick up a girl off the street, you know, in Miami. So nice. it was just a silly show and I hosted it. Um, and uh, it was just some random guys, like uh, my friend tagged me, hey, they're looking for a host. And so I applied and I got it. And um, it, it was a very short lived uh, series. I think only it only did two episodes. <laughs> And cool. it was kind of crazy. Like it was a lot of fun. I just like nothing was scripted. So that was all just off the, you know, off the dome and just messing with people on the street, which was so much fun. Um, but it was crazy because I've never gotten internet roasted so much until that video. <laughs> like after the video, people were roasting me in the comment section like oh because you know it's a mostly black site so to see an asian girl they're they're pulling all their asian jokes on me you know like um ling ling and you know the typical ones like my nail lady does comedy now what the fuck is this you know just stuff like that <laughs> and uh, oh my god but the funniest the funniest uh roast that i got was this bitch looks like spongebob squarepants's grandma <laughs> and I was like, I had to Google it. I'm like, I don't know what SpongeBob's grandma looks like. And sure enough, <laughs> me neither. <laughs> well, for anyone listening, and you yourself, Molly, afterwards, check it out. SpongeBob SquarePants, this grandma, sure enough, has a round face that's yellow. <laughs> I was like, damn, they got me. They got me. <laughs> but um. <laughs> yeah, so it oh was just God. it was just like a ridiculous thing and then um uh after that they actually they replaced me. They use a different host because they quote wanted somebody with bigger assets, aka bigger tits and a bigger ass. So they replaced <laughs> me. Yeah, cuz it's like that kind of site, you know, that like they want clicks. So they replaced me and um it, it was funny though, because after, you know, even though they roasted me like in the comments in the first video, the second video, they were like, where's Ling Ling? I want Ling Ling back, you know, like <laughs> this, girl, this girl's basic, you know? So even though, you know, she was, she was like more voluptuous than me. She didn't, she didn't quite have the like on host personality. So mm -hmm. anyway, so that was that, yeah. that, um, that little portion of my world star experience and then the other thing was which is so embarrassing i can't even uh whatever fuck it i'll just tell it um this other <laughs> sketch that i did them uh we did like a sketch with them um rapq he's the owner of world star but at the time he gave us the budget to do like a sketch and they didn't don't really do sketches like that on world star so it was pretty cool that he gave us that opportunity and we did this goofy video. I did another, um, I produced it with, 
if you guys know who Kyle Grooms is, he's another comedian, um, you know, Chappelle show and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So we, he was in Miami and we did this um, sketch together based off of one of his jokes uh, called the spa. It was short for the side piece agency. So anyway, we did this like video of, you know, how like a, a fake ad basically like, Oh, looking for some action, but don't want to get caught. And it was just, so cheesy um but yeah so if you really want to go look at that i think the video editing could have been better but we did what we could what we what we could with our but small budget yeah and uh and we got i got a bunch of girls to play like you know the the side pieces and um when I, it was just so funny when i was pitching the concept <laughs> to them they're all like these like you know hot instagram models right and so i'm like calling them up and i'm like Hey, so I'm like trying to describe the concept in the most like professional way possible. And they would be like, oh, so you want me to play a hoe, essentially. <laughs> you want me to play a prostitute? And I'd just be like, well, you know, you don't have to like act it out. <laughs> <laughs> you just kind of like, you know, like you just kind of like, you're going to like repel down some of the wall and you know, you're going to look like a ninja. Don't worry. We'll make you look cool. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. That's like a oh. sketch in itself. Really? <laughs> like, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> exactly. I was like, don't worry. Don't worry. It'll be great. So anyway, um, yeah, so that, that was my two little stints with world star. <laughs> Oh my God. Well, first of all, that was, I got such a good laugh. I was trying to not laugh over you because I know it's like on a virtual call. Sometimes you can do that. It, it messes up the story, but that, <laughs> that is so, I got to look up. Now I know I got to look up those videos. I got to look up SpongeBob's grandma. I didn't even know he had a grandma. <laughs> I'm, like, like, I'm like, SpongeBob I'm had not. a grandma? Oh my yes, God. I know. Like, what? <laughs> Sweet little cookie lady. Yeah. Cookie head. Oh my God. <laughs> and honestly, like, I think you're gorgeous. So anytime you host something, uh -huh. I will make sure to support it. I'll put something really nice <laughs> in the comments. So I'll go here. But I, I was just like, is she dancing? Is she rapping? Like what is like, oh, that's cool. immediately when I see hip hop, but I, I that's even better. Was there, yeah. uh, during that stint, was there like, a, I know you said you had interactions with people on the street. I'm totally mm -hmm. curious now, was there like an interaction that you had with people on the street that stood out? Um, yeah, the one, I think the best moment of that uh, video was I had approached these guys um, to be on camera and um, they said, oh, sorry, we don't speak any English. And I'm like, you just said a full fucking sentence in English. And then it was just kind of like, a, funny little like clip like what do you mean you don't speak English you said you you know enough to understand what I was asking you and then respond back in a little full sentence so yeah that was that was a cute moment <laughs> <laughs> I love that that is so awesome um, now you also put in your bio too there was a fusion comedy why don't you explain a little bit about that what a what fusion comedy is for people who don't know Okay, sure. Yeah, I don't even know if it exists anymore. <laughs> um, it might. I hope it does. But yeah, it was a small network. Um, actually, wow, shout out to Jessie Mendoza. She's the same one who got me the BuzzFeed thing. Uh, but she also got me the fusion comedy thing, I believe, as well. Anyway, so it was like a small... Um, you know, comedy or network. And I, I think, I think they still exist. They at least have fusion still. Anyway, um, so Art Basel happens like once a year. It's a big art festival, I guess you could call it. It happens in Miami, Basel, like all over. I think they do like a few different um, things all over the world. Anyway, uh, so we just did a thing with um, like kind of going around. It was, I think, right after Trump got elected or was about was running for president. I'm not sure like the timeline of that. I can't quite remember. I think it, he had already gotten elected. So we were going around looking for like political art since we knew that would be a big speaking point and just kind of poking fun at some of the art, like, you know, um, the one clip that I guess came from that in my, in my funny, on the side of my funny, what am I saying right now? <laughs> um, was that there was a big, there was a big uh, blood stain on this bed with a sword through it. 
and it was like supposed to be like a Trump, like, you know, protest against Trump. And we're like, huh? You know, what? The, how is this? Whatever, it's art. So, you know, I just walk in the room and I'm like, oh God, I I remember when my I got my first period, you know? So I don't know, just like silly like commentary, commentary on the art that was supposed to be political at Art Basel. And then on top of that, we went around and we had kind of made our own art, but it was like goofy. It was like an entire map of Asia but we put the word China on it. And it was just like, you know, what do you guys think this represents? And 90% of the people did not realize that that was not just China. It was all of Asia, <laughs> you know, like they were like, oh, um, you know, they would just be like, oh, well, China's very big, you know, and stuff and they're taking over. And, but it was more like a commentary on, uh, um, you know, everybody thinks that people from Asia are all Chinese, you know, it was kind of like a little, <laughs> let's see if anybody gets this art and we would go around and ask about like, you know, we had like another one that said um, a picture of an eye and then a picture of a knot, like a rope knot, and then a picture of a chai tea and then a picture of someone's knees. And we were like trying to be like, can anyone understand what this art means? And then people <laughs> would be like, you know, I rope, coffee and you know they were trying to figure out and someone someone finally got i am not chinese and then they would like you know get excited about like solving the little puzzle of art that we made so it was just another goofy video <laughs> oh i love that though i think that's actually well, I actually kind of love comedy like that. I think that's really creative to do that. Um, just because I love any improvisational comedy, especially with sketches and whatnot. So I didn't even know you did that. That's really, really cool. Would you say, <laughs> that, yeah, honestly, I, I love it. And I was a theater major, so I love using art to kind of throw into comedy and act stuff out. <laughs> so props to you. I a lot of respect for that, uh, which kind of leads me to my next question too. I always ask this and you know, maybe you will branch off a little bit. Would you consider, like, what would you consider your style of comedy? Um, I know you mentioned a lot of, like, improvisational uh, attributes. Would that be kind of the core of your comedy? Or do you have another definition or kind of some words to describe what you would consider your style? Oh, shoot. When I first started, I would say it was, like, all improv. I don't think I wrote any real jokes until, like, you know, six, eight months in. <laughs> My friend told me that Sura, I think, um, I think you would be, you know, a lot better if you wrote some jokes. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. That's how this happens. You know, I would just like do everything improv or kind of had like a base of a concept in my head. But anyway, so around like six months in, I finally started writing some jokes. And I, you know, I guess my fear is, is like, I don't want to uh, like speak like hear a joke and think that it's mine like you know how they say what do they call that when um like comedians um anyway i don't know like like in your subconscious it's in your subconscious and then you yes it calls mm -hmm. or whatever it's called so i i got fearful of that i'm like i don't want to ever like get accused of joke stealing so i'm like well there's no way that i could steal a joke if i keep it only about like my upbringing and myself you know and focus it like only on my life like how can you know you say I ripped that like it's my life you know so mm -hmm. I tried that's how I started kind of developing my set like all right let me take my adoption my uh you know missing fingers like my you know everything like that like that makes me me and turn it into some jokes so um I guess you could say my my joke style is like a lot of sarcasm in there. You know, there's always like, oh yeah, you guys, you guys didn't notice my missing fingers. You were distracted by my huge tits. Is that what's going on here? You know, so just always like, I don't know, like sarcasm. I like sarcasm a lot and dry humor and uh, that kind of thing. And a little bit dark too, a little bit dark, you know, because like, that's how we survive as humans. We got to see the lightness in the dark. <laughs> Absolutely. Like, that's how I always kind of feel, too, because it's, you know, you have to find the funny in life on a regular basis, because I, you know, I come from a blended family. I was the one kid uh, in between both of my parents, and, you know, my parents are always like, oh, you know, you're kind of our last chance baby, and I'm like, I wonder how my siblings feel <laughs> about this, like, you know, but... 
And I, you know, you always find the funny in that. And I think that's what kind of brings people together is, you know, being like, oh, you know, you find that light and that darkness that, you know, maybe you, you didn't know, realize, you know, you didn't realize. And that's kind of the beautiful thing about comedy, um, which, you know, adds a little bit more substance to it. But I, I really appreciate your story. I didn't even realize you had any missing fingers too, by the way. So oh, yeah. I must have not even noticed. I know oh my I'm not sure God. my hand, but <laughs> <laughs> I can't even tell. So, oh my gosh, I didn't even notice. So I, that that's hilarious though, that you turned that into a joke. I, I love it. Um, I must that have done that stuff that night. <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't hear it then. I know you, I know you had mentioned things about New York and whatnot, and I don't remember the whole set, but I didn't remember that. I'm definitely have to like watch some more of your videos now. And I think that's great <laughs> too. Like you're making it your own, which I think is the best part about comedy. Um, and then another thing too, I'll ask you, you know, we talked about you moving in New York and moving from borough to borough. Do you feel like you will be staying in New York for like, you feel like that's going to be your comedy hub or do you think maybe you'll move out to Los Angeles at some point or Chicago or wherever, or is kind of New York the right place for you? I think, I think because I sold my car, I'm kind of stuck in New York for a while. <laughs> um, <laughs> everywhere else you need a car to get around pretty much. Maybe not Chicago, but still, even so. Um, yeah, so I think I'll stay in New York for a while and like, you know, try to really, you know, make a little name for myself here. And I'm not ready, even though I love the weather in California. Oh my gosh, I love it. Um, I just, I'm, I don't, I don't know. I just don't want to sit in traffic for 90% of my life out there. <laughs> so uh, I'll go out to LA like every now and then. I'm actually going uh, later this, um, oh, this weekend. I'm going to LA this weekend. Wow, that came up really quick. And um, mm -hmm. I'm making my debut at Laugh Factory. So I'm really excited for that. Uh, I'll be at uh, the Laugh Factory Long Beach because um, it's closer. I'm staying in like Orange County. So it's pretty far from LA. It's like, you know, an hour if you're lucky, but more like two hours because of traffic. So mm -hmm. Long Beach is closer. So I'll be making my debut um, Saturday night, the 930 show at Laugh Factory Long Beach. If anybody listens before that, <laughs> oh, that's it. Yeah. Uh, come yeah, yeah. So, um, but no, I think I'll stay in New York. Uh, I mean, the, there's no other city in the world where you can hit, you know, three, four shows a night, you know, no problem, which is pretty cool. And uh, there's just always something going on. There's always people popping in and just being surrounded by that energy and that buzz and people that are like doing so much, like people who are not, um, my friends who are not comedians are like, wow, you're doing so much. And then like, then I compare myself to comedians in New York. I'm like, I'm not doing shit. You know, like it's just, it's <laughs> so good to be surrounded by people who are constantly like doing better than you just so you can elevate your game as well. Absolutely. I, I totally feel that just because um, a lot of people all the time ask that question, like, you know, people who are non-comedians are always like, why are you so busy? Like, you're just doing too much. It's crazy. And then I'll sit down and do an interview with somebody and I'm like, oh my God, this person's so accomplished. I'm doing nothing. Like, it's just, it's, so I totally get how you feel, but that's the best part is when you surround with, you know, people like Reggie Cush Edwards or, you know, people that we know and love. It's, it, it's just, I you said it so beautifully that the word elevate is great because it's just like, it elevates you, it raises you up, which is great to do better and want to do better. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and there you go, see? Props to you producing your own podcast, that's awesome. I love it. Oh, thank you. Oh my gosh, yeah. No, I love talking to people. Like I said, I'm inspired now to like go and accomplish more. And I know, <laughs> again, the Laugh Factory in California, I always say at the end, like, do you have anything else coming up that we should know? I know you just mentioned that in California, but is there anything else that uh, you're looking forward to that listeners should know about? Yeah, so um, my next, I uh, guess, also show on the road would be um, in, Tampa, um, actually technically St. Pete, I'm doing a show at Burgerish, but it's, I've done it before and it's a great, it's a great room. That'll be, um, the 20, what's the Saturday that's in the, on the 20, is it 25th? Hold on. I'm pulling up the calendar on my phone. So Saturday, is it, um, in February, February? Are we in February right now? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> So there's Saturday, yeah. February 19th and Sunday, February 20th. 
Yeah. Okay. Wait, what's the Saturday? What's the Saturday? So, so Saturday we have either the February 12th, 19th or 26th. 26th. That's the one. <laughs> okay. I knew it was like 25th, 26th. It was around that range. So yeah. And then um, tentatively Miami doesn't know this yet, but I'm tentatively planning to come also the Thursday and Friday, but I got a lock in date. So I guess just check out my Instagram or whatever. And yeah, I'll post where I end up. Absolutely. Yeah, plan, a trip. plan a trip with another flight or um, another comedian who has flight attendant benefits because his girlfriend's a flight attendant. So we're going to plan a little comedy road trip down to Miami. Well, not road trip because we're flying, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that you have your wings, this is exciting. I'm excited for you. Uh, well, Subra, I appreciate your time. This has been wonderful. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit too, you know, you mentioned your Instagram, but why don't you tell us a little bit about where we can find you to find out everything Subra related? Uh, sure. Everything is my handle on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, uh, MySpace, you name it. <laughs> it's Hoora <laughs> for Sura. H-O-O-R-A, number four, S-O-O-R-A. Hoora for Subra. Absolutely. Cool. I appreciate it. Um, and then anybody else, if you liked listening today, uh, just make sure that you follow at the Casually Molly podcast. You can follow on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. Uh, we even have a TikTok now. So if you want to follow Ooh. at Casually Molly, I know you might see Subra, Hoorah for Subra on TikTok. You never know. So, <laughs> um, now, I always ask at the end of the episode, now that we're done with our interview, what are you going to casually do now, now that our episode is ended? Oh, I'm casually going to probably take off my pants and crawl into bed. <laughs> 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 I got I, I was like debating if I should wear pants for this episode. I'm like, oh, like they're not going to see that, right? But I'm like, what if she asked me to go do something and I forget that I'm not? <laughs> <laughs> It'll turn into a whole different kind of podcast. Um, so, yeah. I uh, I gotta wake up like really early. Like flight time life so glamorous. Waking up at four a.m. <laughs> so yeah, I understand. I just, so, um, but I put on my eyebrows for you. So hope you enjoyed them. <laughs> oh my god, I was about to say they look great. So <laughs> that's why I'm like, oh girl, and it was just like it looks effortless. I love it. <laughs> oh yeah, this is my daily arts and crafts activity. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. My eyebrows are my daily arts and crafts. I gotta. You'll have to give me some tips. I'm like mine are a little thin, but I think it's a. Uh, I think it's time to maybe get maybe elevate these eyebrows. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> don't be too crazy. Don't like arch them too crazy. You look like an angry bird. Like, have you seen those girls? They're like, ah, always look surprised. <laughs> you know what That's I'm why I'm always elevate. so afraid of that. But yeah, we'll have to elevate them. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> you look great, girl. Well, Thank you so much oh. for having me.
same routine. Going through the same routine. 